we have so many different parts that we make and so many different needs that not only from a, a technical perspective are um, different in the engineering world, but applications from one piece to 5,000 pieces or more. Um, I think it's most important for us to understand what the customer really needs. Is it something that's ongoing? Is it something that uh, is a project, something that's time bound or quantity bound? I think that's important for us to understand. Those, those things right there would trigger uh, a different approach over the other. Our business is really around the, the repeat uh, contract manufacturing uh, components where we have, we have forecasts, we have visibility, and that allows us to really plan better in the shop. So that is a different approach in the estimating world, how we look at it versus a, a project that's going to spike very quickly and possibly end very quickly. Uh, I think there's, there's a business relative to, I'll say, the lean manufacturing part of our business. There's business decisions that we make um, based upon how quickly we can move things through, not just in the cycle within the, the machine, but getting it from one operation to another. So how do we look at that? How do we really try to streamline from a a laser operation to a brake operation to welding. It's not just the true cycle time that we look at, but we try to do our best to understand the full scope of the product and then try to make a business decision on how to approach that with a price. As far as the quoting, Tim, I think our customers want, want quick quoting. They also they want accurate quoting. So we try to be we try to marry those two thoughts together. And uh, you know, Mike touched on a lot of things relative to quoting. I think one of the things that's critical though is, is ensuring the scope's understood. Uh, and sometimes you can look at a print and see what the uh, drawing or what's really required. We can have a conversation with a customer. But one of the things we found over the years, it's really an often overlooked area, is the aesthetics of the part. Uh, the finish of the part, uh, we've gotten into a lot of cosmetic stainless steel work over the last couple of years in the food and beverage industry, pharmaceutical industry. So we've really come to, become to, come to appreciate how important surface finishes are. Um, um, Number four, stainless steel finishes with what they need to look like when, when they leave uh, PCI. Uh, so we try on the front end to really understand not only just the, the, the tolerances and the material requirements and labor requirements, but also the finish requirements. And it's something that we found if that's not really properly communicated or discussed with the customer on the front end, there can be a lot of misunderstanding between uh, the supplier and the customer, something we try to flush out at this point. One of the... Um key things to understand from an estimating perspective at PCI is we don't make our own product, so we don't have a, a proprietary product line. So any estimate that comes through could be in any of the markets which have various requirements, different technical specifications, different needs. So you almost become a creature of, of what comes through the door in terms of estimating, so to speak, um, to try to quickly understand what their needs are. Although we, we don't make, for example, just a construction component or we don't live in just the the automotive world. We support six or seven key markets and we have to estimate across the board for all of those customers and really really try to understand their product. So it's just something to take into consideration. I wanted to, to add in the, the, the complexity uh, uh, challenges that we, we face with the estimating world. I think it really starts with understanding the scope of the, of the project or parts we're looking at the quote. And when the scope's understood, we can move through it pretty quickly. I think when there's confusion around the scope or the tolerances, and there ends up being um, a lot of dialogue back and forth, which is helpful and sometimes necessary. It also slows the process down a little bit. So when, this, when the scope is clearly identified in the very front end, that helps us move through it as fast as possible. Um, having said that, I also think it's, it's worth the time to have the dialogue back and forth to be sure we're on the same page mm -hmm. of what's required, particularly uh, uh, rolling in the aesthetics piece as well. I would say it's, it's the open dialogue and communication. It depends. So for example, if, to, to Brian's point, if it's a, a laser only application, you could say we do that all day long, we should have a formula. Well, what machine is it going to go on? What bed size? What raw material considerations do we need to take? Do we run samples? It just depends how detailed we think we need to get on a given opportunity, which really goes back to when the customer needs the, the, their pricing.